We all know how modern diplomacy works, with embassies placed in each other's countries and ambassadors communicating with heads of governments receiving their orders from home. But how did medieval diplomacy work? And a part of the medieval period which is representative is the opening phase of the Hundred Years' War. Well, first of all, there were no permanent embassies during this period barring those with the Vatican, although some ambassadors and diplomats were attached to a king's court for a long period if they were, say, allies in a war. Normally, though, ambassadors weren't present until one was sent to deliver a message. These message-bearing emissaries were either members of the nobility or high-ranking clergymen, or, if it was extremely important, a member of the royal family. These ambassadors were given orders and a list of concessions or demands that they were allowed to make, and much of it was left to their judgment or capability. Success would see promotion and reward, whereas failure would see them earn the king's displeasure, which was not something anyone actually wanted. Now, medieval diplomacy operated within two frameworks, which aren't relevant to modern international relations. The first was feudalism and the fact that many leaders owed fealty and allegiance to others. For example, the Duke of Brittany owed fealty to the King of France, despite being nominally independent, but this didn't stop him from trying to create his own alliance with Scotland at the expense of France. Also, you know Edward III, the King of England, who, as Duke of Aquitaine, also owed fealty to the King of France, which, in case you're wondering, he refused, hence the start of the Hundred Years' War. The second framework in which medieval diplomacy operated was as part of the Christian world, which underpinned everything, including feudalism. The church demanded to be made privy to all negotiations, and the Pope could theoretically veto any proposition or peace treaty, just like when Scotland asked him to use that veto to stop France from making a separate peace with England. The Pope ignored this. So one of the most common diplomatic actions at this time was the creation of alliances. And whilst the most notable one of the Hundred Years' War was the old alliance between France and Scotland, the one between France and Bohemia is the newer one and so we'll use that one as an example. Alliances were often secured via the marriage of royal children to either nobles or other royal offspring. Like when John, the heir to the French throne, was married to the daughter of the Bohemian king. The idea being that the offspring of these marriages would tie the kingdoms together permanently. Whereas in reality, it often just led to dynastic conflict, like the Hundred Years' War. The way it worked was that suitors would be proposed, money would be offered, and the terms of the alliance would be hashed out over a long period, often years. So what about declarations of war? Well, there was no formal act of declaring war, because frankly, there was no need to. The reason being that medieval warfare took a long time to get started. Raising an army required word to be sent across the kingdom to rally the troops. This would get noticed pretty quickly by merchants or spies and relayed to the party that was about to be invaded. And as for peace treaties, these involved ambassadors travelling to the court to make terms. But sometimes they didn't even have to travel that far, such as for King John II of France in 1360 because he was currently sitting in an English jail. And so that covers the main forms of medieval diplomacy and how they were conducted barring church business. It was mostly done slowly through nobles and clergymen sent to discuss terms and report back. There were no formal declarations of war like there were in the 19th century, and much of it was conducted through the nuance of fealty, which in case you're wondering could be traded away, and one thing that dominated them was the rights of the church and Christian values, which is what made it most fundamentally different from the diplomacy of today. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching with thanks to my Patreon supporters whom you can see on screen now. Plus with an extra special thanks to James Bizanet, Danny Maloney, Cool and Castleman, Party Boyko, Rob Waterhouse, Mo, Aaron the White, Michael Reynolds, Chris Wicker, Gustav Swan, Urshway and Emperor, Gareth Turner, David Silverman, Spinning Three Plates, Maggie Pakskowski, Christian Cheke, Spencer Lightfoot, Winston Kaywood, Anthony Beckett, Kelly Moneymaker, Robert Wetzel, Lexi Schwinn, Sky Chappelle, and Ike.